six scale, November 2nd, 23. All right, let's start with... Um, release v11 so like, the only thing i wanted to do with this is um to just mention your pr and then i um because i thought it would unless you oh let me see do you have us together okay yeah so i wanted to see the um uh with the labels i just wanted to show it let me see if i can load the page Can you hear me? Yeah, I, don't I can know if I'm hear still you. Still connected or not? Okay, I don't know why I can't. Oh, do you want me to share the screen? Oh, is good. Is DNS out? What? What? Oh, so cloud. Flare is down. Maybe that's what's going on here. Yeah, I can't even get to. I can't even get to the the web page. Okay. Um. Okay. I don't think that's gonna work then. All right, let's go to this one and see if this will work. Are you able to load these at all, Lily? I guess I can't. Yeah, I'm able to load it. All right. Then why don't you share? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, can you so, see my screen? Yep, I can see it. So um, this is so this is your PR. Do you have the graph in there for um, uh, with uh, the la with the labels in there that rendered? Yes. Maybe Should be if we go to the um, if we go to the EMD yeah. markdown document. So um, this is the document and I think we should have release V1 labels here as well. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So um, the major update here is that we have passed three release data, so this is v59 v60 v1.1 and this red one is the change in uh gates provider uh okay. so yeah it's clearly ever uh, not sure why this is september 6th it should be september uh sorry not sure why this is september 3rd it should be september 6th uh, it's a correction we will have to make. Okay. Let me see. Does, um, I think um, maybe we can talk about um, well, real quick the formatting because like I was just thinking to myself. So you have go to your uh, your markdown. You've got you've got a key right. You've got it says what each. Sure. Uh, here. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you've got um gray, blue, gray, blue, green, red. Okay. Maybe what we can do, uh, this is this is by the way, this is fine because it's actually really, really good for the um for this reduce. But what I was gonna say is um I uh what we can do is like as we get like when we get to like the third version in here, um what I figured we'd do is since we're gonna consistently have these two things, like a um a provider update and then a a cut of the new branch maybe what we do is we just have two colors where we do um uh and and it's like going to be pretty it's, it should be distinguishable because like they're going to be like these large spaces in between the two of them so like we'll always be able to know like those first two on the left are are the you know like where we put a table and say like okay this is this version of Kubernetes and the provider chain and then the cut of the release. And then this number two is this this provider, this this version. 
maybe that's how we can we can do this. That way, you don't have to constantly add more bullet points with um to explain the different colors. Got it. Yeah. Um. The one thing I was trying to do was eliminate this whole uh, index itself and see if I can get the labels printed here on the graph. Okay. okay. But I, I think I have the code for it already merged, but that code is not working and I did not get a chance to debug what the, the root cause is. It's in HTML and Plotly, so not okay. very strong <laughs> with, with debugging that. Uh, okay. But, yeah. Okay. That's that's probably even better. Yeah. Let's go with that. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So this, eventually, this, great though, like, this is awesome. This is cool to see. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This is really, um, like the idea of what we are trying to do really makes sense here. And I assume what will happen in the future is these two lines uh, will keep keep shifting left. Uh so we will. Mm -hmm. At the end of um, everything, when the dust settles, we will have six uh, lines here. One for the release and one for the provider switch um, for yeah. HD. Yeah. Yeah, we basically, right, what ends up happening is like that gray line ends up becoming right next to that y-axis. Yeah. Yes. So... Yeah, uh, that's a quick update. Uh, cool. This is the the chart, uh, and it's some of the problems that we have been seeing with the groupings here. Uh, mm -hmm. They actually are very evident after these lines because I mean this line should be here. It's a bug. I'll go fix it immediately. But um, yeah, the, the observation problems are seem to be at least happening after the provider switch. So uh, that's an additional point for when we get to debug these. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, some more updates. Uh, Sorry, Ali, uh, what was the metric? Yeah. So the uh, the this one yeah I, I just was trying to understand if if the metric can be uh, can vary in a, in a nature you know so for example if you have higher uh, collisions then i expect patch to fail and then you need to retry so maybe we can color it with uh, number of recues number of errors and such uh, yeah, that's a good point, but I don't see, uh, so the, the metric is that for every hundred VMIs, how many patch calls does the kubeword stack, uh, makes, right? And over the last three releases, we have seen that in, um, release 0 0.60, we increased from around hundred to 200. And we have uh, we have been stable here, and this increase was actually found out that we added uh, a annotation or a label patch in the word controller code base. So that's why we see this increase um, during this time, and it has been stable from there. Um, after the provider, I don't see a reason why we should expect entries like this, right? On the lower end. So 120, um, yeah, 129. I understand. You know, it could be maybe a correlation with two, uh, two events. So uh, bumping uh, up the Kubernetes and at the same time, some change in Kubernetes. Yeah. Yeah, that could be. So, um, I think what I was trying to say is if this was collision errors, if we would see the scatter on the top side and not on the bottom side of the graph. And uh, we are seeing on the bottom side. So I don't know if this is false observation or whether 
there was some kind of a change where two patch calls are bunched into one because if that is happening then this can make sense but i did not see any such change uh go through so yeah i'm not really sure why we get this scatter here yeah if we can get i don't know if we if there's a way we can figure it out or if I mean, I think it'd be interesting to go talk to the Kubernetes six scale again and show them. I mean, I think there's, it's kind of interesting. Like, uh, like I wonder if there was, they did some sort of optimization around patches or control the runtime, how to change. Because I, I do you, like, do you know, like, do they measure like patch pods, patch counts per pod? Like, is this something that, that they look at? No, I think these metrics are coming from our internal uh, tooling. So we have a uh, metrics measurement, right? Which intercepts every call that the clients make and uh, reports it to Prometheus. So these numbers are coming from that interception. It's not something reported by Cube API server. Well, it is so, even Cube API server has that metric, but we are not able to differentiate whether at API server level, this came from Kubeword stack or not. So we needed to uh, account for these calls at the client level rather than the server level. Yeah, well, it's just interesting because I mean, I think it's pretty clear the pattern here like this, you know, what changed was the Kubernetes version and all of a sudden now we're doing more patches. Our client has to do more patch. Well, it's not even the case. It actually sometimes has to do less and then sometimes it has to do more. It's just that it's very sparse. So, I mean, it, it's there. it just seems like there's a behavior change of some sort. I, and that's what I would think would be interesting to report to the upstream six scales. Like there was, because they may know or be aware of a patch change that they've done on the API server side or some sort of change they made. And then, and then you know, they've measured the results in whatever way they've measured it. And now we have our results. It would be interesting to see how they react to it. Yeah. I and mean, maybe there's, maybe they're like, oh, okay, yeah, we pushed this feature. We weren't sure how CRDs and other controllers would be impacted. And, and you know, we're, we, we, have, we have that data. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Can get additional data points there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, so that's for the release V1. Uh, I think the the weekly jobs have been doing their work. Um, we have the data. I briefly looked at uh, the data. There was nothing much interesting. Like we are following the lines. You see the average go down because we had a couple of runs that did not report any metric. Uh, and this is consistent across uh, both the graphs. Mm -hmm. So okay. uh, no major changes on this. Yeah, even here. Okay. Um, right. Yeah, so that's all I had for the, um, for walking through the graphs. I think uh, one more, um, since V11 has released, I think it will be great to plan a little bit for V12. Um, I did not get a chance to brainstorm um, what all we need for 1.2, but I was hoping that um, we can at least throw out some ideas um, of what we need for 1.2 and, and you know, in subsequent calls, maybe um, triage that a little bit. Yeah, I think yeah, it's a good idea. We we should do a little bit of planning. I think like one one was our our goal was we had all this focus for our our reporting, and I think it's gone really well. So um, I think maybe at least to start for one two, I think it's just to to finish up what we want to do here with the reporting, and then maybe let's we'll see if we can come up with some other things. I mean, I I mean, I think we can probably come up with um. I mean, we can probably come up with a few like things we want to look at for performance wise and 
we haven't we can try to look at a few things we can try in the dedicated cluster i think that maybe a few areas we can yeah we can look at but let's I start would... with that let's finish up the reporting and maybe we can well we can do this as like um we, we can think about it for the next week and we can um come back yeah. with some ideas so some high level thoughts i had was um mm -hmm. We, we currently, in our measurements, we don't have memory or CPU utilization of Word Handler, um, sorry, of KubeWord resources involved when creating these VMIs. I wonder if we should like at least lay some groundwork for uh, measuring that and having it show up. I, I don't think that having end-to-end -end graphs might be feasible for one day release, but at least if we can find a way to, you know, measure and report in Prometheus, then we can stagger in one three um, and have graphs for that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right now we basically have the job that tells us like if we've increased or decreased and that's all that's just you know on a pr if we go over the limit but it's not very specific it doesn't even tell us yeah. how much yeah yeah that would be a nice addition to measurements Right. Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, if we, I think like, uh, I, I don't know, like I don't have anything else right now, but maybe we can like, let's, we'll take the week or a week or two and let's, we'll just have this as a floating topic the next few weeks and we'll just keep working on come up with ideas yeah. for this. Sure. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll keep adding to this as, um, as things uh, come up and we can discuss. Okay. All right. What's number three? Yeah, so I wanted to share some graphs. Um, this was discussed in last uh, Kubernetes six scale uh, meeting and um, actually wanted to correlate the performance uh, improvement that we have seen in the release V1. Actually, let me pull that up. Yeah, so in this graph, it was quite notable, right, that after we switched from V125 to 128, um, there was a very concentrated observations and it lowered a little bit. I wanted to share one dashboard um, from Kubernetes folks, um, which can help us um, correlate such changes um, with, with what uh, Kubernetes is seeing and, and reporting. So um, th this is the performance dashboard that reports uh, the six scale tests um, and the numbers. I don't fully understand all the terminologies, but um, I found one. Um, so these are the different types of uh, tests they have. And one particular test was interesting where the load was um, of a stateful pod. So what I assume here by stateful pod, it means that they have a PVC or some kind of state attached to the pod and then um, they are measuring the pod startup time. If you look at the graph, there are three reported metrics, percentile 50, percentile 90, and percentile 99. This is very similar to what we report. We report P99 and P50 um, in different graphs, but this is all combined in one. So wanted to share the 125 and 127 measurements here. Uh, so if you look at the, the upper bound and the lower bound of these uh, P50 percentiles, right? It's 46 seconds here. 46k milliseconds or 46 seconds and that's the upper bound and for p99 we have around 53 right and the spread you notice that the spread for these results they it seems to be massive going from all the way 
22 to 53. So even in P50s, the spread is quite uh, massive. Again, 20s and, and 49, 50. This is almost close to uh, P99, right? 53 and 50. So if I change this to 127, you can see that the graph shrunk a little bit. We no longer have that 53s. The P99, we have a slight increase, sorry, slight performance gain, and we reduce to 51. Even here, um, you know, we went a little bit on the lower from 46 to, to 41. And my assumption is that the correlation we see here is pretty much reflected in our uh, performance metrics here. And the cool part about this is if I compare this with 129, the graph gets even better. So now we are, you know, going down in uh, P50 to around 28 or so um, from, yeah, actually, yeah, from 30s, right? P50 is 30 here. It seems to be the max, uh, 31. And we are going a little bit lower than that. Actually, we are going a lot lower. This is, yeah, this is 31. Yeah, the upper bound is staying consistent, but I feel like this P50 has gotten better in 128. So what I'm expecting is when we switch providers again, we will see a little bit of a performance gain um, that's reflected in this dashboard. At least that's the expectation. Cool. I mean, I think it, did you did you talk to them about this? Like, I, I mean, we can. It'd be cool to present exactly like they. I mean, they're they're looking at it and observing the um, the performance change, and um, I mean, we could present and talk about what we have. It, it just validates what they're seeing. I mean, I think that would, I think that would just improve their confidence in, in what they have to, um, you know, if we were to go to, to show this, because I mean, the thing is they don't, they, I wish they had a trend line here. We got, I mean, you're trying to show it, but the, um, we can clearly see the trend line. And, and I think, um, I think that would be cool to show. Yeah, no, I did not get a chance to talk about the observations. Um, Last time when we talked, it was just about um, sharing and telling. So I we did not know about this dashboard at all. So mm -hmm. until now, all the conversation has been about information gathering. Um, right. Yeah, okay. I well, we can we can always go back. I mean, I think yeah, I think like it'd be cool just to share um, because our I think I mean our reporting is getting better and and with the trend line, I mean. It, I think it goes along with what's shown here. I wish, like I was saying, I wish they had a trend line. I think it would look similar to ours. It just, but showing it from our end, I think will will increase their confidence in what they've in what they've seen. I think they, I think that group would find it pretty cool to see. Yeah, um, some of the the observations from this dashboard is they have job numbers reported directly here on the x axis instead of time. Um, and that is really helpful because if you go click at the link, it will directly go to the job um, where this observation was um, reported from. So I, I know we have been talking about, you know, probably getting a, a job name or, or something like that in our um, tooling as well. So um, it, it's, it's already here and I found that very, um, helpful. Like if you want to go look at a bad run and triage, um, you should be able to do it from here. Cool. Yeah. So that's all I wanted to share. I um, I'm still trying to learn. There are a lot of tests here. Um, some of them 
are really for like API servers and storage. And so for example, this watch list on and watch list off, this is that new feature where list will be converted to a stream and it will not be as memory intensive as it is now. And they have uh, tests for that as well. So I haven't explored this 100%, but it, this is really, you know, um, something that we can look for for more data points. Cool. Okay. Okay. That's all I had. Yep. All right. I think yeah, that's all we have for point for um agenda item. Sorry. Any I think anything else then? Any other open items? No. Okay. All right. Um QCon NA is next week. Um if um if you're going um I mean, I'll I'll be there. I'm, I'll be talking about Qvert, the V1 release. Uh, so I don't know. I'll be around. So come say hi. And then, um, so I don't know if we'll be able to do our meeting next week. So I guess what we'll do is we'll just keep um, we'll keep this topic around for uh, and we'll we'll plan to revisit this one two planning uh in two weeks. Yeah, sounds good. All. All the best for KubeCon. Exciting stuff. Cool. Yeah, it should be fun. Enjoy. Lubo, you go into KubeCon? I not. Not this time. You're, you're not? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll, uh, yeah. we'll meet again in two weeks. All right. See you. Bye -bye. We'll talk to you. Bye-bye.